If you play Airsoft and you want to start filming it, these are the cameras that you're gonna need. So the first camera is the head camera. You just mount it on your head, either using a headband or a helmet, and it shows the viewer the first person perspective. It shows everything you do, who you're aiming at, how you manipulate your Airsoft toy, and what's around you. For this, I cannot recommend anything else other than a GoPro. And it's good because what you want from a head camera is stabilization. You also want to have a very wide view angle and you also want to have good clarity and good picture quality. And the GoPros really, really do that well for you. The Hyper Smooth on the GoPros are absolutely top tier and it only gets better with each new iteration. So that is a must for Airsoft. And the technology on them is really great. They have a very wide viewing angle in the regular wide lens. They also have super view as well as hyper view. And they have a crop size that comes in 4.3 rather than just 16 by nine that a cheaper camera might get you. So you're gonna have a square instead of a rectangle enabling you to actually view everything from the bottom to the top. Just in case you bump your camera and you're looking up at the sky or something like that, you'll be able to use that square to crop down so you can still see what's in front of you. And with the GoPro 11 in particular, which is the one I would recommend, it comes with an eight by seven mode, which is even bigger than the 4.3. So you have an even wider space to use all the way up to the sky, all the way down to your reload. So you can actually see the full reload. So that's why I recommend the 11. And the 11 is also capable of shooting 4K 60 FPS. So that's really, really nice if you wanna get that quality. I shoot this on an eight by seven, 4K resolution, 60 frames per second. Now for your head cameras, you're gonna want to go for 60 frames per second because if you go 30 or 24, yes, it looks cinematic, but that motion blur that you get from 24 and 30 is going to nauseate your viewers. So having 60 and getting that nice smooth experience is much better. That being said, GoPros and any action camera in general do have small sensors. So they don't really deal with low light that well. So dark indoor CQB situations can be a little rough and you're gonna have to play with the settings on this in order to make it usable. You got to do a lot of post color correction and everything like that just to make dark footage look well. But if you're playing outdoors in the nice sunny weather, GoPros are absolutely king for that. And as for mounting the GoPro to your head, I would recommend getting a helmet or some kind of fixed angle gizmo because the stabilization on a GoPro is very good, but it can't stabilize insane movements, which is what you get when you use a headband because it bounces around. But when you have a nice solid piece of hardware that's holding this thing in place, no matter how much you shake it, it's just so much better. And you don't have to worry about the angle. It's just fixed. It just, every time it's always the same. So you don't have to worry about, oh, is my thing too low? Is my thing too high? It's gonna be perfect every time. And the good thing about a helmet is what you can actually do when you mount it upside down you get a really cool first person shooter kind of perspective so being able to mount it upside down is a game changer but that means you're gonna have to invest in a whole helmet setup which a lot of you don't want to do so you might be stuck with this little headband thing now the helmet cam may be the bare minimum for airsoft content but it does have its limitations even in 4k 5k 8k if you're fighting opponents who are far away especially outside in the woods you really cannot see who you're shooting at or your viewer cannot see who you're fighting. Even if you crop in and zoom it in, it's just not gonna be the same as if you use something like this, which is a scope cam. So a scope cam is a pre-zoomed in, pre-focused camera. You mount it on top of your airsoft toy and you'll be able to see enemies at a certain distance very, very clearly. And you can track those BBs very, very clearly. Now the scope cam, although you may not want to have extra weight on your airsoft toy, this thing has become an absolute necessity for me. I was okay with the content I was making before, just kind of zooming and cropping in but I realized that it really is hard to see. And once I upgraded to a scope cam, everything is just so much clearer and so much better. And your viewers wanna see who you're shooting at. The only exception would be if you're playing CQB, might not need this. And I played CQB a lot, so I didn't really have the demand for that. But the more I played outside, the more that I felt that I needed this thing. And now even in CQB, sometimes your head camera can't capture a weird angle you're going around, or sometimes the enemy is at an extreme distance and they're only showing a sliver of themselves. The scope cam will help. In my experience, I have maybe used this camera's angle in CQB maybe 10% of the time, but outdoor, it's like 80% of the time. So when you're mounting your scope camera, I would recommend putting it on the 12 o'clock because it is the most natural looking trajectory for your BBs and it doesn't get obstructed by anything because the top of your handguard is going to see most of the action. If you put it on the side, it can get blocked by a barricade. The trajectory looks weird. You're going to do some cutting in post. If you put it on this side, same thing. If you put it on the bottom, it can be blocked by barricades too. So having it on top is the best 
option. That being said, you might find yourself having to make changes to your airsoft setup so that you can accommodate this camera. And for those of you with classic airsoft toys like a Type 89 or an FAL, you might have to find some different solutions like mounting it on the barrel itself. Now the scope cam recommendations, I would recommend getting the new batches of the scope cam 2 by Runcam. This thing is a beast. It has great battery life. It is built like a tank and it is meant for airsoft. It comes in two or three configurations. The main ones being the 25 millimeter, which is this one here, or the 40 millimeter. I would recommend for most players to get the 25 because it gives you a good distance around 30 meters or so that you'll be able to track your targets and see them clearly. Meanwhile, while the 40 millimeter is meant for sniping exclusively, so it will be way too zoomed in for anything other than sniping. And because of this 4K, you can shoot in 60 frames per second at 2.7K, which is basically a little bit more than 1440p. Your videos are gonna be put out in 1080p most likely, so be able to crop it in, move it around, and be able to still get a clear sight picture, even if the enemy is a little bit far away. All right, so the final camera is the selfie camera. This camera is probably the most controversial and optional camera to use for filming airsoft, but the cinematic value of this thing is so high. So this is a camera that you mount on your handguard, which faces you, and it gives your audience a perspective of what you look like, your facial expressions, and acts as a very, very good tool for transitioning and dictating the pace of your airsoft videos. In terms of cameras that you can use for this, you can use basically anything. Smaller the better, it doesn't get in the way. And I I personally used my GoPro 8 because it's my old one when I moved up to the 11 and it works out fine. But what's good about the GoPro 8 and above is that I can film in 2.7K with super view. And super view is like a super wide fish angle so you can see almost your entire body. And if you even use something like the 11 which has hyper view, you can see even more of your body. So. Having this is really good to show reloads, showing what you're doing with your kit, and you can also see more of your airsoft toy. So a GoPro with super view is what I would recommend. Now, the caveat obviously is that it is pretty chonky. If you look at the profile here, it really just sticks out, especially if you're offhand shooting, it's just gonna stick out at you like this. So that kind of sucks and it's really something I don't like. It does ruin the aesthetic of the airsoft toy itself and it can give you this subconscious fear of getting hit when you're going around a corner using your left side. And as a result for me, I've actually kind of stopped going to the left side. So what I end up doing is canting the rifle around corners which is not good for airsoft because of BBs and the hop up making it curve to the left and just falling to the floor. So that is a downside of having the selfie cam, but the cinematic value from an editing standpoint and a creator standpoint is so good. It just adds so much more depth to your airsoft gameplays and it kind of creates a parasocial relationship with you and your audience in the game as well. So it really is, uh, it really is a tough decision. So most of you are probably thinking right now, why don't you just get a smaller camera like a GoPro session or something like that. So what I will say about those cameras is that they don't have changeable batteries. So if they die on the field, they're done. You can't change the battery out. So that means you're gonna have to mount a charger on your airsoft toy itself, which means more weight and more clutter and more wires. So I don't wanna do that. Unlike the regular GoPros where you can switch out the battery between matches so that you're always topped up. Also, GoPros tend to overheat and bug out sometimes. And the only way to solve them is by pulling out the battery. And with those integrated batteries for the GoPro mini, as well as the GoPro session five, you're out of luck. You can't do anything. So that is something you don't want to do. Um, having a reliable camera on the field is very important, which is why I recommend GoPros in the first place. So yeah, selfie cameras, completely optional, but they do add a lot of cinematic value to your videos at the expense of your gameplay experience. So for all of these cameras, you're going to want to protect them because they will get shot out. You are not lucky, they will get shot out. So what you wanna get is a dive case. It will protect your entire GoPro. You can get it off Amazon and you'll be good to go. The only downside is, is that it does muffle your sounds. So what I would recommend is drilling some holes where the microphones are. You can look that up on Google and you'll get most of your sound quality back. Another thing too, is that your GoPros may rattle inside the dive case. So what I've done is put some double-sided tape and just kind of shimmed it so that it's super tight in there and it's not gonna rattle when you're running around. Another thing too is when you put it inside a dive case and you don't have any of these air holes, it will overheat your GoPro and GoPros are prone to overheating really quickly, especially in the summer. So drilling those holes will help with the airflow. Another tip about the GoPros is that you want to change the batteries out almost every game because even if the battery life is still there, 
these heat up and that will just turn off your camera anyway. So keep switching them around, which I also recommend getting multiple batteries as well as chargers to always have them on deck. I'm always switching batteries out every single round. And that's a pro tip for you if you find that your GoPros are overheating. In terms of the scope cam, the battery life is pretty good. It lasts the whole day, but I would recommend charging it when you can, keeping it topped up, maybe on lunchtime during a long break. So you won't have to worry about this thing running out of battery. Okay, so now I wanna show you an example of an airsoft clip using three different cameras. Once with only the head cam, once with the head cam and the scope, and once with all three. I want you to see which one you prefer the most. <laughs> So what do you think? Which one told the best story? Which one was the most engaging? Let me know in the comment section down below because this is preference in the end. But guys, that's how I film Airsoft. This is how you can film Airsoft. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions about this. But guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to watch some Airsoft gameplay, click this video right here.